CJ Peterson, and welcome to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. Today, my guest is going to be Tony Lloyd, and we're talking about his passion, which is kind of teaching others to thrive and not just survive. Thank you for coming on today, Tony. I'm, I'm happy to be here, CJ. Thanks. Awesome. Um, could you please share a little bit of your backstory before we jump into, you know, where you currently are? Sure. Um, you know, you asked me before we started recording a little bit about where does this idea about thriving come from? Uh, you know, I mean, my entire life, I sort of wanted to make a difference, right? I think we all do. We want to make an impact, a difference with our lives. Uh, but when I was about 14 years old, I had a near drowning accident. And oh. there's, there's something interesting that happens to people when they go through trauma. You know, sometimes they can become bitter and sometimes they can become better. And so for me, there was sort of this uh, post-traumatic growth that took place from there. Uh, you know, a few things I realized in the moment when I was sort of laying on the bottom of a lake and not knowing if I'd ever take a breath of oxygen again. I think for me, um, you know, I knew in that moment that I wanted to live. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew that if I was going to live, I would need I, I wanted to make a difference, right? I wanted to do something with my life. But in order to sort of do that, I had to give myself permission to be visible to other people. And, and that, it goes against my nature. My nature is I'm kind of an introvert, uh, <laughs> which surprises people because I'm very, you know, ah, I'm out there, right? Oh, uh, right but, but, at the, but at the same time, I really recharge by pulling in, right? So I don't, and I also recognize that, you know, as a, uh, currently as a, you know, 61-year-old white male, that I have been given all the sunshine in the universe. I've been given all the privilege, all the opportunities in life. And so I can't really make it about me, right? So, so how do you go about showing up, being visible, playing big, giving other people permission to play big while not being self-centered, self-focused, all that. So, so that's been the trick and the balance of my life. And that's kind of what I'm about. Well, I'm totally with you. In 2016, I had the same idea. Um, I went septic. Mm. My kidney and liver completely shut down and I was 50% cardiac failure. Wow. So I get the idea of that. And when you come out since that point, I have published one of my series, which has won now four awards. Wow. Um, I've published this podcast, which gives other people like you a voice. Right. Um, I have started a publishing company with my sister, Texas Sisters Press. And I've started a five acre farm with my husband. We do, um, we're taking our five acres and changing it to a fully functioning self-sustaining farm. So wow. we have bees, trees, gardens, solar, you know, we've got it going on. And when you hit that mark and you come out of that, it's like, okay, God kept me alive for a reason, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. it's your mission to figure out what that is. And right. when I came out of it, I came out of it. It took me a good year or so to get out from underneath all that pain medicine, yeah. but, and there's still some side effects to it. But when I came out and I jumped, I came out running. Right. And I haven't stopped. And doing things like the Journey's World podcast allows me to bless others and return and giving them a voice like you today. Yeah. And so I totally understand exactly where you're coming from, that complete mindset. Yeah. Um, can you, we, one thing you do with Thrive and Not Survive is you teach people to kind of be a social entrepreneur. What is that? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, a social entrepreneur makes money but the money is in service of a mission, right? So they make a dollar and a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've been interviewing a lot of people who, um, you know, have a social impact. So, you know, sometimes they have an impact by what they sell or how they sell it. So for example, uh, I just interviewed somebody the other day. Uh, he has a company called Arclight, A-R-Q-L-I-T-E. And what mm -hmm. they do is they take plastic that you can't recycle, right? It's like it's a mixed waste plastic or it's a particular kind of plastic you can't recycle. And they make a construction gravel and that construction gravel actually in the construction industry has a high value because people want lightweight material. They want uh, things that have good um, energy insulation, things that have a good sound insulation. And so this 
arc light gravel is very valuable and they're taking waste out of the waste stream and they're creating a uh, value by creating this uh, object and then they sell it to construction companies who love this product. So, that so there's cool. somebody who's, who's making a dollar and they're making a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, or there's a, there's a company called, so sometimes it's what you sell or how you sell. Sometimes it's how you source your material. Mm-hmm. So there's a company called Fair Anita as an example. And uh, Joy McBreen is their, is their uh, CEO. Uh, and what she does is she sources jewelry and other objects from uh, women around the world. So she has uh, 8,000 women who are in women's groups in like 16 different countries. Mm-hmm. And they, um, they buy this jewelry and they sell it to millennials, millenniums, millennials, millennials. millennials. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, no, it's great. It's cool. It's funky jewelry. It's very highly prized. It's not too expensive. And yet she's able to help these women to lift themselves out of poverty by how she sources and what she sources. Or um, here in, uh, I live in the uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul area. And here we have somebody who makes a difference by how they staff. So uh, there's, uh, there's a company called All Square. And All Square is a grilled cheese sandwich shop. So full stop, you've got me right there, right? So, yeah, really, I'm like, just see my head peaked a little bit there. I'm like, yeah. okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, so just by itself, it's a great product. It's something that's not too expensive. It's good food. It's, you know, fun, funky, great. Um, but what they do is they hire people who are coming out of, uh, out of prison, out of jails, and they give them an opportunity to learn culinary schools Very and then cool. to find employment in uh, culinary uh, with their culinary skills. So they make a difference by how they staff. And then sometimes um, companies make a difference just by what they share, how they share it. So one of my favorite stories is uh, this company called Spoonful Apparel. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they sell t-shirts with, you know, uplifting slogans on it. So, you know, what's, what's the big social benefit to that? Well, they take uh, their profits and they give half of it to the food bank and uh, uh, specifically around children's food. And so they feed hungry kids for every t-shirt that gets sold. So, so know, for different- example, when like a portion of the proceeds of my, of my books actually yeah. go to different charities. So there that's you go. Kind of along the same lines of that, correct? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, social by sharing. So social by selling, social by sourcing, social by staffing, and social by sharing. So those are four different ways that these companies, they make a dollar and a difference. They make money with a mission. So that's that's basically the idea of what is a social entrepreneur. Okay, cool. So like I said, um, a portion of the proceeds from the different book series is go to different charities, yep. even the standalone ones. I try to find one because I want to help different people. You know, however it looks, it gives them exposure, right? As well as they get a portion of the proceeds from, you know, what I make on it, which isn't much, but I, I yeah, trust me, I'm an author too. I know we're not exactly <laughs> getting rich off of book sales. No, but, uh, we're not. But no. it gets exposure for those. For example, the Grace Restored series, a portion of the proceeds goes to Hope Store, which is a domestic violence shelter in Plano. Yeah. Yep. The Divine Legacy and Holy Flame Trilogy, a portion goes to Airborne Angel Cadets of Texas who ship packages overseas to the military. Um, the new book um, goes to a counseling center here in mm. Texas. Yeah. And so I try to find something that somewhat matches what's going on within the book to try to connect it with something else. That's great. I love, and I love that you teach, do you teach people how to do that or do you just find them or? It's a little of both. So, um, you know, I, I teach per purpose-driven business leaders, how to thrive in life, connect with others, and contribute to the world. And so, uh, you know, part of what I teach other people to do is really sort of, you know, self-development, because you can't pour from an empty vessel. Uh, But then part of it is also business development, so helping them to look at their business plan and figure out how they can make the greatest impact with the business that they have. Mm -hmm. Well, like you, um, I wear multiple hats. I'm a blogger, author, podcaster, a <laughs> farmer. <laughs> um, what are some of the many hats that you wear? Yeah. So I, um, I currently produce three different podcasts. Okay. Uh, what are they? An, uh, so one is called Social Entrepreneur. 
Uh, a second one, and that is really, we, you know, I say we tell positive stories from underrepresented voices focused on solutions. So we tend to, tend to interview a lot of uh, women entrepreneurs, a lot of people of color, a lot of, uh, you know, just people from different walks of life that maybe, uh, you know, I have spent my life receiving all the sunshine in the world because I am an old white guy. And so we won, right? We won the, the zip code lottery. We won the age lottery, mm -hmm. the gender lottery, all that. So I don't need any more attention on me. So, so my role is to take the light that's given to me and to reflect it on these places that maybe they weren't getting the light prior to this. Okay. So, uh, so lots of hidden stories, lots of very interesting stories that people didn't know about. Um, the second uh, podcast is called Thrive, Connect, Contribute, and uh, we interview, it's about resilience. Mm -hmm. So we interview people who thrive in life, connect with others, and contribute to the world in the face of adversity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, lots of interesting stories, lots of people from lots of walks of life. I interviewed, uh, yesterday I interviewed somebody who calls himself the blind blogger. And yeah, I he, had him uh, here. I have him here. Yeah, Max. he's a great guy. I love talking to him. Yeah. Um, I talked to somebody today. She's, uh, her name is Claire. She's in the UK. And uh, she was, a uh, you know, she went into broadcast media, broadcast sports. She's covering tennis matches. She's traveling around the world. She's in Auckland, New Zealand on a business trip. And all of a sudden, bam, got hit with a disease. Oh, put no. into bed. They, they were saying, we're not sure you're going to live. And then how she came out of that. And then you know, she's like climbing her way out of it. And then COVID-19 hits and all the sports are canceled and all this. So she found this nonprofit organization called Class of 2020. Uh, they're at classof2020.org.uk. And they have all these free online courses that they're putting together. And now she's leading that team and, you know, one of the managers cool. there. So lots of cool stories like that. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one is called Anti-Racist Voter. And so, uh, you, know, the, you know, people have become aware and concerned about structural racism, that there are, uh, there are systems in our country that sometimes keep people in poverty. And so how do you tackle those things when they're big and hairy and structural like that? And so one of the ways we do that is at the voting booth. So we, we interview people who are experts on, uh, let's see, criminal justice, uh, economic justice, um, uh, environmental, uh, education, healthcare, immigration, voting rights, all that kind of stuff. So how do we dismantle the um, racism that's baked into our system that I think we're all uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. but I don't know that we know the, the right answers. And so we're talking to people who are just saying, I, I have this little piece of the puzzle and somebody else is saying, well, I have this little piece of the puzzle. And hopefully between now and the election, we'll talk to enough people that we can kind of figure out how do you vote? You know, one of the things, um, CJ, that I think was interesting, a couple of days ago, I talked to somebody who is a county commissioner, right? Mm -hmm. So when most people vote, they vote at the top of the ticket, they figure out who they want for president, maybe senator, Congress, and then at some point, they're going down the ballot, and they go, I don't know, you know, and either they leave it blank, or they just close their eyes and vote for someone. Which is very painful, because there are some things on there that they really need to read, and they also need to read how it's worded. Right. Um, so, you know, it, one thing, you know, who thinks about their county commissioner? Who is my county commissioner? I don't know. And so you don't think about that. In, in Hennepin County, where she's at, which is just across the river from me, they have a $2.6 billion budget. And so you get to make choices and trade-offs with that budget. And you say, you know what? We have a mental health crisis right now. How much of that budget is going towards that? There's an opioid crisis. How much of the budget is going towards that? Housing is not affordable for a lot of people. How much of the budget is going towards that? So, so they make lot, lots of life-changing choices that if we aren't thinking about it, we might go down the ballot and just not even make a choice. And now we've just put it into the hands of a stranger that we didn't have a voice in. So, so those are the kinds of things that we're working on right now. It's very cool. I like that. So Thanks. with your many hats, um, <laughs> like I said, I have all of mine onto one website. You yeah. literally go on there and you can find whatever you want in there. You just got to find the right tab. Right. Do you have all of your stuff onto one website? <laughs> if so how can people find you? Yeah, you know, here's what I started to feel like. Uh, so 
when I first started, and I started like, you know, when the earth was still cooling and dinosaurs were walking around <laughs> the earth, you know, uh, you know, there were, there were people that I was looking at and I go, well, how do they do it? And so like one of the people I like a lot is a guy named Michael Hyatt. And, mm -hmm. and so Michael Hyatt has everything hanging off of michaelhyatt.com. Now he also has, let's say platform university. So on michaelhyatt.com, you can find this stuff. And then if you want to know how to build a platform for yourself, then you click on the link. Well, now it's going to launch another website because there's a lot of complicated stuff. So my website started to look like a Christmas tree that was overladen with all these bulbs and all the branches were sort of hanging off. So eventually I started breaking out different things I do. So I have, uh, I have for, um, TonyLloyd.com, and we talk about that in a minute, but then the Social Entrepreneur Podcast is there, but also you can see the episodes from all the other uh, podcasts, but each of the podcasts has its separate site, so there's three of those, uh, and then uh, I have a coaching consulting uh, service called Culture Shift Company, so it's cultureshift.com, and so that's there because if somebody's looking for coaching, they don't want to sort through 10,000 podcast episodes and two books and 10 other things. And, you know, they want to say, I have landed here. What's the one thing I want to do? I want to sign up for a free coaching session, or I want to take a free assessment, or I want to do this thing. So I made that decision. I don't know that there's a right answer, mm -hmm. but for me, uh, you know, this is how it has evolved over a period of time. And that's, that's, you know, each way's got to, so how do they find you online? What is your uh, website? Yeah, I would start with TonyLloyd.com, but the only tricky part is my last name is spelled with one L. Okay. So the URL is T-O-N-Y-L-O-Y-D.com, TonyLloyd.com, uh, and you can find everything else from there. Perfect. Well, we have about five or so more minutes left. Is there anything you'd like to add? You know, I think, um, you know, I, I think you hit on something a while ago when you talked about your experience around sepsis and all that. And, you know, it's kind of, it, it made me think about, you know, what, what the Apostle Paul said about uh, suffering. He said in Romans 5, 3 and 4, he said, you know, suffering produces perseverance mm -hmm. and perseverance builds character mm -hmm. and character creates hope. Yep. And, and I think that people right now, um, you know, this is a crazy time you know, yes. that we are living in. You know, it is discouraging I mean, for some people. I mean, especially down here in Texas, Louisiana and Arkansas just got smacked with Laura. It literally, if you looked on the website, the radar, it literally went like this to us. Yeah. So we literally just missed it. Yeah. It yeah. was so, it skirted us right up there. And so we're dealing with people down here in Louisiana who don't have electricity. They don't have yeah. food. They don't have water. Right the basic stuff. And it's, if you're in a smaller town, you kind of tend to get neglected, but yeah. dealing with COVID stuff on top of all of that. Yep. Yeah. I think we have sort of this intersection of all these things happening right now. You know, we have civil unrest, mm -hmm. we have COVID-19, we have, you know, California is on fire with forest uh -huh. fires. You know, the Southern coast, like you mentioned, there's hurricanes, there's environmental degradation, there's, you know, uh, all these things happening at the same time. And so um, whether or not we see these as a growth opportunity, that is really going to make a big difference. You know, I, I don't know, you've probably read Viktor Frankl's book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning. I, I think if he were writing it today, he might say people search for meaning. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, uh, Viktor Frankl, um, you know, he, he, He's Jewish. He went into a concentration camp during World War II. Uh, and the thing that he figured out while he's in a concentration camp is you can take away a person's everything. You can take away their, you know, their clothing, their family, their business. He, before he went into concentration camp, he had this life's work book that he had written and he sewed it up into the lining of his coat so that he would have oh, it cool. and so he went into the uh the concentration camp and the first thing they did was strip his coat off of him and threw it on a fire so you know like he lost his family he lost everything but the thing that he said is the last freedom that we all have is to choose one at one's attitude in any get let me try that again, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way. Mm -hmm. And I think that 
given the chaotic nature of what's happening right now, given all the, you know, the, the intersection that we're living in of all these catastrophes hitting us at once, I think making a choice that I want to grow from this, I want to be better from this. On the other side of this, you know, people who go through uh, po post-traumatic growth, they have uh, improved relationships with others, improved uh, possibilities in life. They have uh, increased personal strength and spiritual changes, and they have these uh, enhanced appreciation for life. And you've seen it on your own show, right? So it's kind of like we're all these sort of, you know, I don't mean to say we're all nuts, but it's kind of like, you know, a person is a walnut. And, and then, you know, when we receive a mighty blow, it's kind of like that outer shell cracks open and all the sweet stuff can come pouring out. So, yeah. so I think seeing this as an opportunity that to remember that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance builds character and character leads us to hope. I think that's an important message for us today. Exactly. I, this, I can't remember who says it, but it might be Franklin. Life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to it. Right, right. And so, you know, it is your mindset. You know, how are you going to look at it? Are you going to look at it as well as me? Or are you going to look at it as, okay, what can I learn? Right. Every time I fall or anytime I fail, I'm one of those people who jumps in with both feet. So <laughs> I make mistakes. When my blog is... Um, the journey to fruitfulness. Yeah. And I put in there the lessons that we learned and I put in our epic failures. I yeah. put in our, oh cruds. I put in <laughs> our joys and our successes. I put yeah. in our, oh, what are we going to do? Right. And I do a spiritual application to it. Yeah. When you, something happens to you, you need to look at it and figure out how to learn from it so you can come at it more intelligently next time. Right. And, yeah. and that's the goal. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's in your mindset. Don't lose hope. Um, Tony, thank you for coming on today. Really appreciate you sharing your heart and sharing your advice. Uh, for those interested in looking uh, more for Tony, you can start by heading over to his website, which is T-O-N-Y-L-O-Y-D.com. And we do thank you for coming on today, Tony. And I am CJ Peterson of CJPetersonWrites.com. Thank you for watching The Journey is Real. We talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. Until next time.